Hello, it's Mr. Drake, and I hope you are all doing well today. I have a book to share with you called The Carpenter's Gift, A Christmas Tale About the Rockefeller Center Tree. And this is another book we gave out at Christmas to our children. It's not dated, so I don't know how long ago. Um, also in this book, it's a story that... Um, is about a hammer, an old hammer that was given to somebody. And this is an old hammer, um, probably not as old as the hammer in the book, but this is an old hammer that was, I think, given to me by my father. Um, and I've used it through the years. And it's also a story about a pine cone and what comes out of that pine cone. So, let's get into it. Let's read The Carpenter's Gift. And it is by David Rubel, and it's illustrated by Jim LaMarche. Has some really nice illustrations. Let's get this centered here. All right, The Carpenter's Gift, a Christmas tale about the Rockefeller Center tree. And the Rockefeller Center is in New York City. Nearly a lifetime had passed, but Henry could still remember what it felt like to wake up in the old shack, especially during wintertime. In those days, the Great Depression gripped the country, and like many people, Henry's parents were out of work. They couldn't afford coal for the stove or warm blankets for the beds, so Henry usually woke up with a shiver. But he didn't complain, because it was nobody's fault. Instead, he visited warm places in his mind. One day in 1931, actually, the day before Christmas, Henry was reading a book when he heard the loud toot-toot of a car horn. He opened the front door and saw his father behind the wheel of a borrowed truck. Go for a ride, Sparky? His father shouted over the rumbling engines. You bet, Henry shouted back and raced inside to get his coat. Riding in any sort of car was a special treat for Henry, not to be missed. Soon he was sitting beside his father, nose pressed to the window glass. They drove into a nearby grove of evergreens. Henry breathed in that strong, familiar smell. Here's the plan, Henry's father said. See those spruce trees, Sparky? We're going to cut them down and take them to the city. Why? Henry asked. To sell them as Christmas trees, his father said. Even though New York City was just an hour's drive away, Henry had never been there before. He shivered with excitement at the thought of seeing all those tall buildings scraping the sky. When Henry and his father reached Midtown Manhattan, they began looking for a place to park and unload. Driving down Fifth Avenue, they found a good spot next to a construction site. Mind if I set up here? Henry's father asked a worker. The man looked at them over. Didn't take him long to figure out that Henry's father was down on his luck. No problem, the man said. I'll give you a hand. My name's Frank. Then he turned around and called out, Hey, Mikey, Paulie, help me out. For the rest of the afternoon, Henry and his father sold trees to passerby. By the end of the day, they had earned enough money to make the trip a success. We should be getting home now, Henry's father said as the sun set behind a tall building. What about the rest of the trees, Henry asked. I thought we'd give them to Frank and the other fellows. Henry nodded in agreement. The best presents are the ones you don't expect, he thought. Because it was Christmas Eve, the workers were having a little party. Frank and the others took the tallest trees that Henry and his father had given them and decorated them with whatever they could cobble together. 
paper garlands, cranberries threaded on a str string, even a few shiny tin cans. Henry added an ornament of his own made of the newspaper that he'd folded into a star. In the background, he could hear his father talking with Frank about grown-up things, the hard times for Henry's family, the shack in which they lived. But Henry didn't want to think about those things. He just wanted to look at the most marvelous Christmas tree he had ever seen. It had been the best day that Henry could remember. He didn't want it to end. He stood before the decorated tree enchanted. The street lights had just come on, and even the, t and the tin cans glinted in their light. If ever there was a magic moment, Henry thought, this is it. He decided to make a special Christmas wish. He wished that one day his family would live in a nice, warm house. After making his wish, Henry opened his eyes. His gaze fell on a pine cone lying on the ground. He picked it up and was turning it over in his hands when he felt his father's grip on his shoulder. Time to go, Sparky, his father said. Henry stuffed the pine cone in his pocket, said good night to the workers, and walked with his father back to the truck. By the time they arrived home, it was well past Henry's bedtime. You must be exhausted, his mother said, slipping off his boots. Straight to bed with you. Shrugging off his coat, Henry felt a bulge in his pocket. It was a pine cone. He took it out and looked at it, remembering the joys of the day and the magic of the tree. The next morning, Henry's parents let him sleep late. In fact, it was well past eight when the toot-toot of several car horns woke him. Rushing to the window, he saw three trucks pulling up outside. All were loaded with lumber and other building supplies. At the wheel of the first truck was Frank, and behind him were the other Rockefeller Center workers. What were they doing so far from the city on Christmas morning? Frank got out of his truck. After you left, we got to thinking, he said. There was all this extra wood lying around. We had the day off, so we thought we'd drive up and see what we could do to help you with this house of yours. Frank looked the shack over, taking in its patched walls and ill-fitting windows. I think we'll have to make a fresh start, he said. Henry's father didn't have words for the way he felt, so he simply took Frank's hand and shook it. The sound of sawing and hammering traveled far enough that Christmas morning for Henry's neighbors to wonder what was going on. A few walked over, saw the new house going up, and spread the word. By mid-afternoon, a dozen more people were pitching in. As the new house took shape, Frank called Henry over. See, the, see those boards, he said, pointing to a stack of cedar. We're going to use them to trim the windows, but they've got nails in them. I need you to pull the nails out. Henry moved to fetch the boards, but Frank called him back. Digging into his toolbox, he handed Henry an old claw hammer. You'll be needing this, Frank said. By nightfall, the frame of the new house was nearly done. By week's end, it had a roof. Soon enough, it was ready for Henry and his family to move in. In the spring... Henry's parents celebrated with a potluck dinner. They invited everyone who'd helped build the house. Henry was glad to see Frank again. He was ready to return the claw hammer, but Frank wouldn't take it. You keep it, son, he said. It may come in handy someday. After dinner, Henry sat happily in his very own room. He thought about his Christmas wish and couldn't believe it had actually come true. He knew he should do something special to express how thankful he was, and he thought long and hard about what that might be. Finally, he decided to plant the pine cone. Maybe he could be Jack from the Beanstalk story, and the pine cone could be his magic bean. Henry planted the pine cone beside the new house. In time, the seedling emerged. Henry watered and weeded it. 
As time passed, both he and the tree grew tall and strong. Henry especially liked to hammer away in its shade, and he became quite a good carpenter, building many projects with his skilled hands. As Henry grew up, however, he became busy with other things. He got married, moved away, and had a family. Most summers, though, he returned to visit his parents. On lazy days, he sat beneath the tree with his son, teaching him how to build things with the old claw hammer. As he got even older, Henry sometimes wondered where the time went. One day he was a young boy waking up with a shiver. The next he was an old man living alone. Not needing a big place anymore, he decided to move back into the house where he had grown up. To keep himself busy, Henry began working on the house, which was showing its age. He especially liked using the old claw hammer. Its polished handle, smooth and dark from wear, felt comfortable in his hand. One day, as Henry worked on the front porch, a man drove up to see him. The man called, told Henry that he worked for Rockefeller Center, and it was his job to pick out the new Christmas tree each year. I just love your spruce, the man said. When I saw it from my helicopter yesterday, I knew it had to be this year's tree. Henry wasn't sure what to do. He knew that being asked was an honor, but he and the tree had been together a long time, and he was reluctant to let it go. I know I'm asking a lot, the man said, but if you agree... I can promise you that your tree will bring joy to millions of people. Henry thought some more. And when the holiday season is over, the man continued, we will mill the tree and use the lumber to help a family in need build a new home. A family in need. Suddenly, Henry felt a shiver. And the calendar in his mind flipped back to 1931, driving to New York City with his father, meeting Frank and the other workers, Building the house, planting the tree. He knew what he had to do. I've been given so much, Henry said. I want to give something back. The tree is yours. Just before Thanksgiving, Henry received an invitation to the tree lighting. On the special day, a car picked him up and drove him all the way to Rockefeller Center where he met the family whose new home would be built with the tree's lumber. They hugged him and thanked him many times for his generosity. Afterward, Henry stood off to the side and watched the family's young daughter. It's so beautiful, the girl said softly as she stared up at the enormous tree. Then something caught the child's eye. A pine cone had fallen to the ground. Picking it up, she turned it over and over in her hands before stuffing it in her pocket. If ever there was a magic moment, Henry thought, this is it. Henry walked over to the girl and they stood together, gazing at the glittering tree. Then Henry reached into his own pocket and pulled out the old claw hammer. Here you go, Sparky, Henry said. You'll be needing this. And that's the end of the story. There's a little bit at the end here that just talks about the history of the Christmas tree and also about the fact that they really do mill it and work with Habitat for Humanity to make sure the wood goes to a family in need. And that's our story for today. The Carpenter's Gift. I hope you enjoyed it. As much listening to it as much as I enjoyed reading it. So until we see you again, that was The Carpenter's Gift. <laughs>